Hello! Welcome to another live stream Friday. Or Friday live stream. Or whatever I call it. I don't know what I call it yet. But welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry I missed last week. Oh, somebody's calling me. Uh, but today's going to be a quick live stream. All my equipment from live streaming last week's, last weekend's conference is put up. So we are um, I'm dealing with trying to find all my equipment and gathering it all back together. So uh, that being said, I am uh, going to bring up some pictures. Uh, and sorry about the background noise. My wife's working. I'm 3D printing. But today we're going to be covering uh, just digitally ditching models for 3D printing, for putting bands on. So I, I hope this helps. This was actually given to me by uh, a, it was a, a request and a comment in a previous live stream so um i decided well i need to do a live stream today let's just do that digital ditching one i can just do it for my computer i don't need fancy cameras now we don't have the duck cam today again my equipment's gone <laughs> i just have my webcam and my computer so it's a real simple live stream today but uh before we get started i did want to say uh, that uh, we had a great weekend. We had a really good. I'm going to show share a tab real quick. I'm gonna, this is from our um, our conference. Uh, this is our group. Uh, you can see me here in the back. I think that's my head right there. Oh, you can't see my mouse, but that's my head right there. Uh, right about there. Yeah, there, there's my head. So that was a great group of people we had there. I think probably 60 or so total, including you know exhibitors and speakers and and all that fun stuff. Uh, so that was all the ORG. A lot of these are members of the ORG, and uh, we we had a really good time. So uh, I'm glad if y'all were there. Uh, uh, say hi. Hopefully, I got to meet you. I was running around, chicken with my head cut off, so it was kind of hard to. Uh, say hi to everybody, but it was really great to see all my friends that that go there every year. I get to see them every year, and they're all ortho lab owners like myself, or ortho lab technicians like myself, and and you know it, it's a lot of great camaraderie. Uh, so uh, here's an example of the live stream using my equipment. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but this is uh, Christian Sarman of. Let me switch tabs. This is Christian Sarman um, of. Gotta kind of skip through these. Of uh, right. Neo Lab. And he's so, given his history. 1976 of, was when we started. He's given his history of going from 100, one to 100 technicians. You know, he's got one of the largest labs in in the nation, and so he's given his history. Uh, and if you've heard of Ortho Labs, Neo Lab is one of the largest ones. Uh, so we had him talk. We had Michael Ryder of ODL talk. So it it. It was really great, and I can't wait to listen to this. I didn't get to hear this because I was out running another live stream somewhere else. But anyway, we are... We'll stick with this. Okay, well, let's get started. Um, this, is again, is uh, digital ditching. Uh, how I do my digital ditching, my secrets, so to speak. But most of, most of the time, I've... Uh, I've uh, learned this from other lab techs talking to actually one of the techniques i'll show you i learned from um one of these conferences like two years ago so is it, it, it paid off being at the conference uh let's see get to my right my correct nope that is not it that's not it there we go and there we go and i got the wrong windows up there we go okay i can see myself now uh, let me share this tab. All right, so this is EasyRx. This is where the files come in from uh, the doctors. And so I've, I've done my due diligence and blocked out the name and other info that shouldn't be out on the Internet. But this is a generic uh, prescription. And if I scroll down, you'll see... Uh, they just want a two-armed RPE, or what, I, what we call a compact RPE. Uh, and we have the models here. So we can actually see, you know, here is the upper scan of this model. So we can check it to make sure it's okay. Uh, and we've actually sent this to Autobase. So I'm going to actually pull this up, and I'm going to view it. And I'm going to view this other one. 
so if y'all don't know, uh, EZRX uh, has the ability to auto base models. So I'm going to show you an example of that. And we can go from there. Let me get these positioned. Okay. So this is the scan as seen from EZRX. So I've opened this up. So I opened this tab and I've just clicked on this EZRX Optimize and it opens up a new tab, which is this one. And this is my, the scan we get. Now I can, I can base this, uh, I can edit this if I want to, uh, but I'm gonna show you what, what I like to do. But I just wanted to show off the feature of EZRX and the auto basing. So uh, in this, Part, if I go here to command center uh, I get the chance to auto auto bracket removal and auto base removal and this is what we get so uh, it's so this was generated by an AI so it, I like to print mine hollow you can print them solid if you want I like to put three drain holes because I print them on, on their backs uh, and if I look back to here you can see what it looked like before so there's that and there's that so uh, that is the auto base feature now what I'm going to do is show you what I what I do usually for uh, prepping bands getting them ready for um, Printing. Then I like to prep my bands before I print. Now there goes Pete in the background. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Hopefully you can. I, I don't have any way of, of testing this, but uh, I'm I'm going to take. The, I like this EZRX optimized one. So here are the originals here, uh, and then EZRX goes in there and automatically optimizes the the video. It automatically will take the the scan and then will fix it, repair it, fill in voids and stuff like that. So easy, the optimized one is the one I like to to work with. So I'm going to download this, and it's just this little arrow over here. You can't see my mouse. Here we go. Here's a little arrow. I'm going to download this, and I use something called Mesh Mixer, and it, this is a free download. And here is the the tab right here. I, I put a link to this in the description. It's called meshmixer.com and uh, it's used not just for dental, it's for everything. Uh, and it's got a free, it's a free download from Windows. So that is what I use to do my ditching and for like single tooth repositioning. Uh, if a doctor wants to, hey, reset this tooth and then make the retainer, I'll, if it's a single tooth, one or two teeth, I'll use Mesh Mixer to uh, adjust those teeth. And that can be another video down the road if, if y'all want that. So now I have, let me share this tab. Now right here I have downloaded this uh, file here. And now I have it set to, if I click on it, it's going to automatically open Mesh Mixer. Now that's going to be in the settings of your Windows computer. Or, or what you use to, if, if you want Mesh Mixer to be the default application to open your STL files. So I'm going to click on this. It's going to open Mesh Mixer. Um, I'm going to have to share this tab in a minute. Okay, so let me move this over here. Kind of froze up on me. There we go. Now let me share this to you. Let me present. Uh, stop screen share. Oh, hi. Screen share. And Max Mesh uh, window. Here we go. Share. And add to stream. All right. So here is my that same file we were looking at. Uh, I now have it open in Mesh Mixer. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, actually let me show you my settings. Uh, let's see where preferences. I didn't think that was going to be that small. <laughs> well, anyway, 
Uh, there's a view here. When you first open it, you might have to set some views. Um, uh, but here, are, I don't have wireframe turned on or boundaries or any of this stuff. Transparent target I have turned on for some reason. But I just want to show you the, the menus here. For some reason, it's not showing the menus. Okay. Oh, I don't. That's show wireframe. Anyway, uh, let me get started here. This actually is not a fast, uh, not a slow process. So, uh, what I like to do is I go to select, I click select, and I change my brush size to 25, hit enter, and so then that changes that little brush size. Before it was 55. So if I go back and go to 55, you see how big my brush stroke is. So I want it small. I found 25 is pretty good for allowing me to fit bands. And there we go. So I'm going to center this and I'm just going to paint. I'm, I'm holding down the left click on my mouse and I'm just painting the gums. Try not to touch the tooth. And I am working this all the way around. There we go. There we go. Painting, painting, painting. So if if I did get some on the tooth, like let's say I accidentally did that, if I hold down the shift the shift button and left click, it's now an erase button. So shift left click erases anything you want to change. Alright, so uh, now that I got that done, I'm going to press the letter key, the, the key B, the letter, oh, hello, K3 people, nice to see you here, but hopefully this helps y'all. So if I, if I press the B key on my keyboard, that's called, oh, let me get back to here, press the B key, and that's called smoothness boundary loops of selection, so smooth the boundary, I'm going to hit enter, and that's going to smooth my boundary, all right? So then I go and I hit the, the T for transform. And that gives me a little uh, XYZ axis thing uh, for how I want to move the selected part of my uh, mesh on here. So I'm actually going to press S because what I found out if I can go down five millimeters, that's about the thickness of a band that I get from the doctors. So if I go five millimeters down, um, and it, somewhere in my settings, I've, this is S for scale. And if I click that, it's going to just go down in notches. So I'll show you the difference. So if I click that off, I can do this, but I don't really know how deep it's going. Let me try to get you a better view of this. I don't know how deep that's going. So let me reset that. I'm going to hit the S now, and it's going to make a scale, and it's going to click in this spot so if I if I hold on click this arrow and go down one two so it says negative five millimeters that's about all I need for a band so there is my ditching right there so again I talked about the conference before I learned this little tidbit from Safana Lee if you're if you're watching how you doing uh, if I grab this box right here now watch this border let me see if I can Watch the border right here and right here. If I grab this box and I dra click and drag down. Oh, let me turn off the scale. This doesn't work. So I'll turn off the scale, click and drag down. See how it tapers in slightly? So then that gives you more of the tooth form you need to fit a band on. Otherwise, it's just straight. And you know most bands are contoured. And, and so you need a little bit of a tuck in. So that gives me more of a, a tooth shape there. So I'm going to accept this. I'm done with this side. I'm going to move to the other side. Okay. And so let me move over here. And I'll just do the same thing. I'm just going to highlight just the gums. Now this, if you're working on something that's buried under the gums, you're going to have to, you know, just like you would prepping a, a band on a model, you have to, uh, you know, not maybe not get as close to the tooth assume the tooth is under the 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 gums and you know use your best judgment so i'm going to hold down shift i'm going to just clean this up a bit 
And in fact, I would almost rather have just a slight ledge of gums there. So I know exactly where that ledge is when it goes to printing. So I've got it highlighted where I want. And again, you're going to have to cut through these teeth just like you would when you prep an a analog model. I'm going to hit the B button. And that's going to smooth and enter. And I'll smooth my boundary, make a nice clean um, cylinder. And I hit the T button. That's, that's transform. Now, sometimes this happens. I'm glad this happened. I don't know why this happens, but maybe somebody in the comments can tell me. Uh, but what I've found out if I click this, Oh, you know what? It's I didn't I didn't clear. Okay, <laughs> this is good. This happened. So um, I'm going to do cancel the tr face transform. I'm going to clear the selection. I forgot to do this last time. Otherwise, it's thinking I want to move this uh, what I just highlight here and what I just got done highlighting at the same time. So then you'll have two unlevel. Now you could highlight them both smooth both boundaries and transform but they're going to be uh in parallel to each other so it's not individual to each tooth so you'll actually i'm going to clear the selection and we're going to go back to highlighting this so maybe i can do this pretty quick so it does mesh mixture does show you where you last select it um, that's why that was a different color so now I hit B and enter and then T for transform and now that thing's in the right spot so kind of good thing that that happened so everybody can see this I'm going to click the S for scale I'm going to grab this blue arrow that's pointing up because I'm going to push it down I'm going to go down negative 2.5 negative 5 that's five millimeters down and then I'm going to unclick scale and I'm going to click and hold this white box and taper that in a little bit now I do like having a little bit of a ledge here it kind of tells me where I know I can take that off with a burr or a knife or something when it when it's time to uh, fit the bands we're gonna go accept and clear selection and now I'm going to export. Now, what I usually do on my export is I'm actually working on this case up here. Without revealing the name, I actually have a case pane number for each one. And I'll, I'm going to save this with using the case pane number. So 138 is my case pane number. I'm going to hit enter. And, and notice I have a, um, a bunch of case pane numbers, 100, 106, 108, 101. It's almost like I'm using virtual case pane numbers in my computer. That way I don't have hundreds of models saved on my hard drive. Um, I'm just saving the, temporarily in, in the digital case pane number. And that got exported. So, back to... Uh, let me go back to share screen. Chrome tab, this one, share. Okay. I'm back here, so you can see bin number. What? Well, you can't see nothing. What do you? Here we go. So I'm back to 138. Right here is my case pan number. I've already exported it out of Mesh Mixer, saved it to my computer with the same case pan number. So I'm actually going to go to Upload Digital Scan here. Upload files from your computer, and I go to my file that has all my case pans in there. And I go to 138, and I click on that. Oh, you're not seeing this. It is now uploading. So I went to my file. It didn't. The screen share didn't show the the file pop up box. So those that use Windows or Apple, when you click upload file, it'll open up your Finder, and you can just click on a a, a file there and upload it. So give this a little bit of a look. Remember, EasyRx is web based, so everything that I do is web-based. I can open it up from any computer, from my home or office, as long as you got the same login. All, this, all the files are loaded uh, in the ether, in, what do I say, the, the EasyRx. So that has been loaded. So now what I'm going to do 
is we are going to base this manually using EZRX. So I'm going to click on 138 and share this tab. It opens up a new tab and I'm going to actually click edit. So that's going to, what I just uploaded, I'm now going to base it. Now you could send it through auto base if you want after you're done with this. You could actually uh, do the bands on the auto base one. I do that all the time. Now you run into a problem of it uh, not being able to go down all the way because I do a hollow model. Uh, it, it'll run into the, the bottom of the thickness that I choose for the model. Hope that makes sense. Uh, but this is probably the proper way to do it. So you can now see my bands. They now have ditches around them. And I'm going to base this. So let's base this real quick. Uh, click left molar. Click in between there and there. And that's going to set my orientation. That tells EZRX, hey, this is the occlusal, occlusal side. Um, here's the front. Here's the two molars. Um, and it just kind of helps orientate the model. So I'm going to go down to... There's lots of options here. But if I keep going down the right hand side, this is mainly for basing. So if I go to easy base, that's going to set the height. So I want to keep this. Unfortunately, it's going to be tall, but I like when I'm doing an RPE, I like to keep as much of the, the palette as possible. So I'm going to keep that. And I'm actually going to put a vertical cutting plane. And it's just a matter because I, I don't really need these back teeth. But this will help trim up the model some. And I'm going to choose hollow. I'm going to choose base height as thinnest. Wall thickness three. I'm going to add large drain holes and add base. Now, remember how I said if I do the auto base, I set the parameters for my auto base to three millimeter thickness wall. So that means whenever I go to ditch an auto based model, I can actually only go down three millimeters. Uh, so my bands that you get from the doctor or that you're fitting are thicker than three bands. You're going to have to do some grinding because uh, you're going to hit that three millimeter thickness. So this will take a little bit of time. Um, send in your questions if you have them. I can answer them while we're waiting on this. Uh, but uh, again, uh, that mesh mixer is free um, from Autodesk, I believe. They're a drafting company. I remember using them when I was in high school. Uh, I took a drafting class, which was cool. Um, and it was the 90s. So it, we didn't have, it was the first time it was on the computer. So it was, it was pretty cool. Let me go back. And I'm going to show you this auto base real quick. And, and just show you what I mean by um, so the underside when you now that you see me ditch it and I, I ditched around here and I made that cylinder and I went down you'll if I do the auto base with my settings now I can change it, it'll change if I change my settings I'll run into this lower the inside of the model now if, if I print a solid model which some printers can print solid models just as fast if I print a solid model I won't run into the problem so you can actually use auto, the auto base but again this is i actually leave this up so you can see a difference um this is the auto base from that that the ai does for EZRX. let me go back to here it's almost finished uh it is taking a little bit of time because And there we go. There, there it is based. Uh, let me go back to here so you can kind of see the difference. Let me go back to here and I just realized there, his name was showing up. So there we go. Uh, and, and sorry about this. Okay. Okay, we're back to here. So we've got it based. Uh, you can kind of see a difference. Uh, I was able to actually reduce the height a little bit and get it more parallel. I, I, I like my own basing, but you can kind of see 
how um, the difference between these two. Unfortunately, every time I activate the tab, the thing reorients. But it's more flat. It's thinner. I can I can fit more on a uh, on a plate if I base it myself. But the added time from auto basing saves so much time. It's so much. It's so much better. So I'm actually going to add the name. I'm going to do. I'm not going to do the patient name. I'm going to do our, the initials and the bin number. And I'm going to position the first label label. And I like to do this side. So I'm going to click left, like you're reading left to right, and it's going to put the patient initials and the name. I'm going to add label. And I like to do an embossed label. It's a lot easier to read uh, and uh, when it comes out of the printing. Now, that's one of the big defaults of the auto base is they haven't perfected the name yet. And sometimes it's a little hard to read. So if I go back to that one and show you, it's a little, it's a small, it's a little blurry. So... Yeah, all right, so there is, see how much easier that is to read. It's it's actually lifted up off. I can engrave it if I want, but I kind of, I just find this way easier to read. I'm going to save this model and save, and that's it. And then I can move on to the next one. Now, uh, while we're waiting on that to save, I'm going to go back to here. I have one that I have already printed, and it's actually from the thumbnail, and I wish I had an, an extra... Um, camera I could show this easier but you can see I uh, already dish and you can actually see underneath it so this is one that I actually ditched uh, on the auto base remember I was gonna run into something and I, I had to actually to get a, the band to fit I had to take a round ball burr and fix that so uh, so now I get a, the band, and this this doctor's nice enough to uh, put them in one of these packets and, and make sure that they're uh, steam steam disinfected. Uh, and so I just take the band when I'm ready, and I just put it on there, and I'm ready to go and set the and make the appliance. So I have the band. Right, I put that on here, and yeah, it's not ideal, but you can, you can hopefully get the point that if you digitally ditch the bands and you uh, print it already already with the dan you don't already with the ditches done digitally, you don't have to analog do them. And plus, I like to print hollow, and if I go in there and try to analog uh, ditch them, the the tooth will poke through. <laughs> so. Uh, make sure you print hollow. Now, I have done it in certain cases where I uh, I forgot to digitally ditch the bands and I printed it, so it means I had to manually do it. What I do in that case is I'll take plaster and I'll fill up the hollow section in here, fill it up with plaster. And so whenever I ditch it, I'll go into the plaster a little bit, uh, but it'll hold this tooth in place. Otherwise, again, I'll I'll be like those cartoons where they got the the guy sitting there and they got a saw and they're sawing around it and then the person the cartoon guy <laughs> falls through that's what will happen on this one so if you forget to digitally prep the band fill this up with plaster let it sit and then you'll have you can do it uh, analog style and you may enjoy doing it analog style have more control so if you do like to print hollow like me fill it up with plaster but again you got to wait on plaster to set and that's another step blah 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 whereas this just takes a few minutes to do and you're done so I'm going to refresh this page and uh, set this uh, let me blur uh, you're not gonna be able to see okay well that didn't work out <laughs> All right, it sounds like my printer stopped. Let me, this is, we're back to the tab. And once you save it in EasyRx, well, so once you're here and you save this, you can't see nothing. Once you're over here and you have saved it, it will automatically save it back to the prescription. So if I go back to the prescription, 
and I scroll down, it's right here. And you refresh the page, it's right here. Now I had to blur it out because of the name, but um, you, you get the point. It saves it right there. And then I can immediately go into printing and I have a whole uh, digital workflow. It's a two hour long. Go find that, my digital workflow or whatever. And, and I show how I go to, it, it's then saved into a print list in EasyRx. And I just click on all the, the models I want to print and hit the the button to send to my nesting software for my 3d printer and it it downloads it and puts it into there without ever downloading into the hard drive of my computer so i can keep my hard drive free and clear using this feature from EasyRx. so that is it that is my whole secret like i said it was going to be a short one hopefully this helped y'all out there if y'all have any tips or tricks put them in the comments below i'd love to hear those uh, and hopefully next time I have all my equipment, we'll get back into, uh, producing retainers and, uh, things like that. So if you have any requests, you can put them in the comments below. Uh, but until then, uh, I appreciate, uh, y'all watching and let me pull up my outro and y'all can lower the volume because <laughs> the outro is so expensive. So, uh, so loud anyway. Uh, let me get my end clip up and again, I will see y'all next time. And until then, happy bending.